we are going to read from the book Beyond Birth and Death. So this has got a small book by Shri Prabhupada and it has got five chapters. The first chapter says that we are not these bodies. So we'll read a chapter today. And if time permits, then over the next few days, we'll continue to read the other chapters as well. Chapter one, we are not these bodies. Dehi nityam avatyo yam, dehe sarvasya bharata, tasmat sarvani bhutani, natam shochi tumar hasi. O descendant of Bharata, he who dwells in the body is eternal and can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any creature. The very first step in self realization is realizing one's identity as separate from the body. I am not this body, but I am spirit soul is an essential realization for anyone who wants to transcend death and enter into the spiritual world. Beyond. It is not simply a matter of saying I'm not this body, but of actually realizing it. This is not as simple as it may seem at first. Although we are not these bodies, but our pure consciousness, somehow or other we have become encased within the bodily dress. If we actually want the happiness and independence that transcend death, we have to establish ourselves and remain in our constitutional position as pure consciousness. Living in the bodily conception, our idea of happiness is like that of a man in delirium. Some philosophers claim that this delirious condition of bodily identification should be cured by abstaining from all action. Because these material activities has been a source of distress for us, they claim that we should actually stop these activities. Their culmination of perfection is in a kind of Buddhistic nirvana in which no activities are performed. Buddha maintained that due to a combination of material elements, this body has come into existence and that somehow or other, if these material elements are separated or dismantled, the cause of suffering is removed. If the tax collectors give us too much difficulty because we happen to possess a large house, one simple solution is to destroy the house. However, the Bhagavad Gita indicates that this material body is not all in all. Beyond this combination of material elements, there is spirit, and the symptom of that spirit is consciousness. Consciousness cannot be denied. A body without consciousness is a dead body. As soon as consciousness is removed from the body, the mouth will not speak, the eye will not see, nor the ears hear. A child can understand that. It is a fact that consciousness is absolutely necessary for the animation of the body. What is this consciousness? Just as heat or smoke are symptoms of fire, so consciousness is the symptom of the soul. The energy of the soul or self is produced in the shape of consciousness. Indeed, consciousness proves that the soul is present. This is not only the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, but the conclusion of all Vedic literature. The impersonalist followers of Shankaracharya, as well as the Vaishnavas following in the disciplic succession from Lord Sri Krishna, acknowledge the factual existence of the soul, but the Buddhist philosophers do not. The Buddhists contend that at a certain stage, the combination of matter produces consciousness. But this argument is refuted by the fact that although we may have all the constituents of matter at our disposal, we cannot produce consciousness from them. All the material elements may be present in a dead man, but we cannot revive that man to consciousness. This body is like a machine, is not like a machine. When a part of a machine breaks down, it can be replaced and the machine will work again. But when the body breaks down and the consciousness leaves the body, there is no possibility of our replacing the broken part and rejuvenating the consciousness. The soul is different from the body. And as long as the soul is there, the body is animate, but there is no possibility of making the body animate in the absence of the soul. Because we cannot perceive the soul by our gross senses, we deny it. Actually, there are so many things that are, which we cannot see. We cannot see air, radio waves or sound, nor can we perceive minute bacteria within our blood senses with our blood senses, but this does not mean that they are not there. By the aid of the microscope and other instruments, many things can be perceived, which had previously been denied by the imperfect senses. 
just because the soul, which is atomic in size, has not been perceived yet by senses or instruments, we should not conclude that it is not there. It can, however, be perceived by its symptoms and effects. In the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna points out that all our miseries are due to false identification with the body. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of heat and cold, happiness and distress, and the disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sun's perception or shine of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Gita 2.14 in the summertime, we may feel pressure from contact with water, but in the winter, we may shun that very water because it's too cold. In either case, the water is the same, but we perceive it as pleasant or painful due to its contact with the body. All feelings of distress and happiness are due to the body. Under certain conditions, the body and mind feel happiness and distress. Factually, we are hankering after happiness, for the soul's constitutional position is that of happiness. The soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Being, who is such an Anand Vigraha, the embodiment of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. Indeed, the very name Krishna, which is non-sectarian, means the greatest pleasure. Krish means greatest and Na means pleasure. Krish is the, Krishna is the epitome of pleasure and being part and parcel of him, we hanker for pleasure. A drop of ocean water has all properties of the ocean itself. And we, although minute particles of the Supreme Whole, have the same energetic propensities as the Supreme. The atomic soul, although so small, is moving the entire body to act in so many wonderful ways. In the world, we see so many cities, highways, bridges, great buildings, monuments, and great civilizations. But who has done all this? Is it all done by the minute spirit spark within the body? If such wonderful things can be performed by the minute spirit spark, we cannot begin to imagine what can be accomplished by the supreme spirit soul, whole. The natural hankering of the minute spirit spark is for the qualities of the whole, knowledge, bliss, and eternality. But these hankerings are being frustrated due to the material body. The information on how to attain the soul's desire is given in the Bhagavad Gita. At present, we are trying to attain eternity, bliss, and knowledge by means of an imperfect instrument. Actually, our progress towards these goals is being blocked by the material body. Therefore, we have to come to the realization of our existence beyond the body. Theoretical knowledge that we are not these bodies will not do. We have to keep ourselves always separate as masters of the body, not as servants. If we know how to drive a car well, it'll give us good service. But if we do not know how, we will be in danger. The body is composed of senses, and senses are always hungry after objects, after their objects. The eyes see a beautiful person and tell us, oh, there's a beautiful girl, a beautiful boy, let's go see. The ears are telling us, oh, there's a very nice music, let's go hear it. The tongue is saying, oh, there is a very nice restaurant with palatable dishes, let's go. In this way, the senses are dragging us from one place to another, and because of this, we are perplexed. Indriyani hi charatam, yan mano nudvidhiyate, tad asya harati pragyam, vayur navam ivam bhasi. As a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind, even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. Bhagavad Gita 2.67. It is imperative that we learn how to control the senses. The name Goswami is given to someone who has learned how to master the senses. Go means senses and Swami means controller. So one who can control the senses is to be considered a Goswami. Krishna indicates that one who identifies with the illusory material body cannot establish himself in his proper identity as spirit soul. Bodily pleasure is flickering and intoxicating and we cannot actually enjoy it because of its momentary nature. Actual pleasure is of the soul, not the body. We have to mold our lives in such a way that we will not be diverted by bodily pleasure. If somehow we are diverted, 
it is not possible for us to establish our consciousness in its true identity beyond the body. Bhogeshwariya prasakta nam daya pahrita chetasam vyavyasatmika putthi samadhona vidhiyate tregunya vishaya veda nistregunya bhav arjuna nirdvando nitya sattvasto nirjoga shema atmaman in the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things the resolute determination for devotional service to the supreme lord does not take place the vedas deal with the subjects of the three modes of material nature rise above these modes o arjuna be transcendental to all of them be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self bhagavad gita 244 to 45 the word veda means book of knowledge there are many books of knowledge which vary according to the country population environment etc in india the books of knowledge are referred to as the vedas in the west they are called the old testament and new testament the mohammedans keep the quran what is the purpose of all these books of knowledge they are to train us to understand our position as the pure as the pure soul their purpose is to restrict bodily activities by certain rules and regulations and these rules and regulations are known as codes of morality the bible for instance has 10 commandments intended to regulate our lives the body must be controlled in order for us to reach the highest perfection and without regulated principles it's not possible to perfect our lives the regulated principles may differ from country to country or from scripture to scripture but that doesn't matter for they are made according to the time and circumstances and the mentality of the people but the principle of regulated control is the same similarly the government sets down certain regulations to be obeyed by its citizens there is no possibility of making advancement in government or civilization without some regulations in the previous verse sri krishna tells arjuna that the regulative principles of the vedas are meant to control the three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance tregunya vishaya vedaha however krishna is advising arjuna to establish himself in his pure constitutional position as spirit soul beyond the dualities of material nature as we have already pointed out these dualities such as heat and cold pleasure and pain arise due to the contact of the senses with their objects in other words they are born of identification with the body krishna indicates that those who de- who are devoted to enjoyment and power are carried away by the words of the vedas which promise heavenly enjoyment by sacrifice and regulated activity enjoyment is a birthright for it is the characteristic of the spirit soul but the spirit soul tries to enjoy materially and this is the mistake everyone is turning to material subjects for enjoyment and is compiling as much knowledge as possible someone is becoming a chemist physician politician artist or whatever everyone knows something of everything or everything of something and this is generally known as knowledge but as soon as we leave the body all this knowledge is vanquished in a previous life one may have been a great man of knowledge but in this life he has to start again by going to school and learning how to read and write from the beginning whatever knowledge was acquired in the previous life is forgotten the situation is that we are actually seeking eternal knowledge but this cannot be acquired by this material body we are all seeking enjoyment through these bodies but bodily enjoyment is not our actual enjoyment it is artificial we have to understand that if we want to continue in this artificial enjoyment we will not be able to attain our position of eternal enjoyment the body may be considered a diseased condition a diseased man cannot enjoy himself properly a man with jaundice for instance will taste sugar candy as bitter but a healthy man can taste its sweetness in either case the sugar candy is the same but according to a condition it tastes different unless we are cured of this diseased conception of bodily life we cannot taste the sweetness of spiritual life indeed it will taste bitter to us at the same time by increasing our enjoyment of material life we are further complicating our diseased condition a typhoid patient cannot eat solid food but if someone gives it to him to enjoy and he eats it he is further complicating his malady and is endangering his life 
if we really want freedom from the miseries of material existence, we must minimize our bodily demands and pleasures. Actually, material enjoyment is not enjoyment at all. Real enjoyment does not cease. In the Mahabharata, there is a verse, Ramante Yoginonte, to the effect that yogis, yogino, those who are endeavoring to elevate themselves to the spiritual platform are actually enjoying Ramante, but their enjoyment is Anante, endless. This is because their enjoyment is in relation to the supreme enjoyer, Rama, Sri Krishna. Bhagwan Sri Krishna is the real enjoyer and the Bhagavad Gita 5.29 confirms it. Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suhitam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatma Maam Shantim Richati. The sages, knowing me as the ultimate enjoyer of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities, attain peace from the pangs of material miseries. Bhoga means enjoyment. And our enjoyment comes from understanding our position as the enjoyed. The real enjoyer is the Supreme Lord and we are enjoyed by him. An example of this relationship can be found in the material world between the husband and the wife. The husband is the enjoyer Purusha and the wife is the enjoyed Prakriti. The word pre means woman. Purusha or spirit is the subject and Prakriti or nature is the object. The enjoyment, however, is participated in both by the husband and the wife. When actual enjoyment is there, there is no distinction that the husband is enjoying more or the wife is enjoying less. Although the male is the predominator and the female is the predominator, there is no division when it comes to enjoyment. On a larger scale, no living entity is the enjoyer. God expanded into many and we constitute those expansions. God is one without a second, but he will to become many in order to enjoy. We have experienced that there is little or no enjoyment in sitting alone in a room talking to oneself. However, if there are five people present, our enjoyment is enhanced. And if we can discuss Krishna before many, many people, the enjoyment is all the greater. Enjoyment means variety. God becomes many for his enjoyment and thus our position is beyond all is that of the enjoyed. This is our constitutional position and the purpose for our creation. Both enjoyer and enjoyed have consciousness, but the consciousness of the enjoyed is subordinate to the consciousness of the enjoyer. Although Krishna is the enjoyer and we are enjoyed, the enjoyment can be participated in equally by everyone. Our enjoyment can be perfected when we participate in the enjoyment of God. There is no possibility of our enjoying separately on the bodily platform. Material enjoyment on the gross bodily platform is discouraged throughout the Bhagavad Gita. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of heat and cold, happiness and distress, and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sun's perception, O Shayana Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Gita 2.14. The gross material body is a result of the interaction of the modes of material nature, and it is doomed to destruction. Antavanta ime deha nitya shyokta shari vinaha anasino aprameyasya only the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and the living and the internal eternal living entity is subject to destruction. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. Bhagavad Gita 2.18. Sri Krishna therefore encourages us to transcend the bodily conception of existence and attain to our actual spiritual life. Gunan etan atitya trin dehi deha samut pavan janmam rityu jara dukher vimiktom britam ashnute. When the embodied being is able to transcend these three modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance, he can become free from birth, death, old age, and their distresses and can enjoy nectar even in this life. To establish ourselves on the pure Brahma Bhutta spiritual platform above the three modes, 
we must take up the method of Krishna consciousness. The gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the chanting of the names of Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, facilitates this process. This method is called Bhakti Yoga or Mantra Yoga. And it is employed by the highest transcendentalist. How the transcendentalist realize their identity beyond birth and death, beyond the material body, and transfer themselves from the material universe to the spiritual universes are subjects of the following chapters. So we'll stop our reading today. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us.